Hello, my name is Nani Martinez, and I'm here with Lauren Fellhaber. She is our wonderful CEO and our lead set designer. Uh, we are going to be talking about a set that she has done in her past, um, kind of like a case study. Uh, so what can you tell us uh, about this project? So this one was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. It was an influencer, a larger influencer that wanted to do a project. Um, he wanted to do a paid video um, series that he was going to release. So what we did was we came up with a set design concept um, for his video and then filmed it, executed oh. it, and released. Uh, I can't say too much, but oh, right, it had to right. do with a nursery set that oh. we did. Yeah, but it was very different than a normal set I would design. Mm -hmm. Normally, I would design the full set, set it up, let them come on, film, yeah. set dress if they need me to, or I would exit and yeah, yeah, yeah. take it down afterwards. This one was a progression set. So I would do a portion of the set before, then they oh. would start filming. And then I would add to the set. So the progression of the show took, you know, uh, over about eight to nine months of the progress of the development of the nursery room. So they wanted it in phases of the development. It. So it was kind of different. So we would pause for about an hour while I would, I would reset and add some more elements to the space and then refilming. So I think filming took about three days, if I'm remembering oh right. And then it was just progression, progression through there. So fun. then for the design aspect, you not only had to get approval for like one, you got to have approval for each step. But <laughs> yes, yes. So that was the different process, right? So normally the process of the set design is you would get uh, the concept, go over the design, show them the renderings, get all approval. But then we had to say, OK, I would like to transition at this time and this mm -hmm. time. How do you feel about that transition? What are you going into your topics? So we needed to really get into the nitty gritty script and decide when we were transitioning into the next phase. And you said it was a nursery. So was it like a very like baby heavy with like, you know, a bunch of pictures of babies or well, what, what, was, what did it look like? Yeah, it was really pretty. Um, mellow colors. We went with a soft green um, and a cream color and then a natural woods. Um, so originally when I ask them what their vibes are, I usually ask the clients to either provide a mood board or some images that express their design style. Most people don't know what their design style is, <laughs> you know, which I don't blame. Mine goes all over the place, too. But, you know, I'm like, just show me images of what you like. And then I can pull from those elements, you know, well, what is it about this image that you really appreciate or like? And then that gives me a great idea to start designing with. Mm, okay. And then what kind of, uh, what was their vibe or mood? Yeah. So back when they gave us the original images, green was the one color I pulled from a lot of different images that they showed us. So I think it was like 10 different ones and he always gravitated towards the green. So mm -hmm. I was like, that's definitely the color we have to stick with. And then the other thing was, um, graphics, like a texture, um, graphic design that he was leaning towards too. So I was like, okay, we'll definitely pull in something cohesive with a design element, which we went with kind of a triangle hash mark um, and pulled it throughout the space. So once you figure out what the client really likes and wants, then you can usually nail it right off the front um, going into the design if you're really hearing and asking the right questions. And was there anything like specific that you really liked about this project? This one, um, working with the clients was fun, you know, because mm -hmm. it was a lot of fun to kind of uh, learn about their looks, their styles, and get to work with them on the show and be on set the full time on this one, too. Um, so yeah. I think that was the best part is being on set and hanging out and kind of transitioning the set as we go. Sounds like they're like a fun group of people, huh? Yes, yes, <laughs> it was good. <laughs> That's awesome. And then uh, was there anything like, that when you came upon and you're like, oh, this is really hard or, oh, this is difficult, anything like that? Um, Not too much. The only thing that, well, actually, there was some challenges. So the <laughs> challenges that we faced in this one was how did we quickly transition to the next phase? Right. So when we figured out the whole design and the look and they approved on that, um, then we had to go back and say, okay, now how can we execute this whole back wainscoting 
mm-hmm. quickly and what the, is the work we can do ahead of time to lay it all out so we can keep filming rolling um, and keep it to an hour because that's what we told we were told you have to keep it to about an hour of transition wow. in between so we had to r- pre-paint a lot of things pre-cut everything get it all ready to where we could quickly um put the item up and mm-hmm. keep moving so we weren't holding up the whole entire crew. Yeah, that, <laughs> that sounds like it would take a lot of planning. Yeah, and it's a lot of pressure, right? Because then the whole crew's on pause, like, staring at you, waiting for yeah. you to, like, finish <laughs> they <laughs> before you to they can go. Get out of here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, the next shot. Okay, are you almost done <laughs> so we can pre-light and, like, move on? So, yeah, you know, that was the biggest challenge. And most of the time you don't have that much. Mm challenge where the whole crew is just held up until you transition a whole mm-hmm. entire set you know you do have those happen often but in my line of work in the commercial usually i do the whole set pass it over to them they film and i'm done oh that's awesome uh do you feel like you did a good job or is there anything you wish you could have improved um the only thing with this one is typically the process that i do um with the clients is i ask the questions the right questions, get their vibe. And I can usually nail it right off the bat, Mm -hmm. what the look is and the design and the feel. Um, This one, I remember having to go back and redo some things. So um, I think, you know, the hardest thing is to getting your client's image of what they want Mm -hmm. out of their heads into your head. And I think with that, I I thought I understood a few things. So I was like, okay, well, let's go back and kind of redo this a little bit. Um, And I usually give people, you know, two or three trials where we can kind of adjust and Mm. um, make some adjustments. But a lot of preparation goes into set design. Um, So it's not like, you know, some some aspects of design work. I'll take like a logo design. Right. Mm. You can do, you know, three to ten versions of it and present all those to the clients and kind of see what they like Um, with set design. It's it's like 30 to 40 hours that go into just the pre-design of this set. So you do one set. You don't Mm. do, you wouldn't have enough time to do, you know, three options. Um, So you do one cohesive design set. And then if you want to do an alternate wall, you know, where you're going to let the client kind of choose, well, here, or I couldn't decide which I like, so I'm going to ask you guys what you like, and we'll place that in. Then I'll do some alternates um, or some adjustments that way. But Typically, I'll come in with one cohesive design and let them kind of make some edits and tweaks from there. Mm. Um, And most of the time, we don't have full on transitions with directions of the design if everyone's on the same page, meaning the client, the director. Um, If someone's not on the same page, then we might have complete transitions into design moods and what they originally told me. Then that's a whole nother ordeal. We didn't have that in this case at all. It was just, you know, tweaking where, okay, well, let's decide we're going bigger on the set so that you Mm -hmm. have bigger camera angles. Um, Let's decide we're going to change into more simplistic. Mm -hmm. Um, And now that I'm kind of thinking back on it, that was the first transition is when I presented the first set, it was a little a little busier than what they were expecting. And usually with camera. You know, you want every corner to have something interesting. Mm-hmm. But when they looked at it, they were like, yeah, like can we oh, simplify this a little bit? It's too much. <laughs> too much. Too much. <laughs> so that's where I was like, OK, I missed the mark a little bit on that. Mm-hmm. Let's go in and simplify this um, so there's not so much going on yeah. on camera. So I think and that in return made it a little easier. Right. Because when I transitioned um, in between each show, less and to work. it was less to have mm-hmm. to do. Right. Because the first one was a lot. So. Did they have any like specific like, oh, I really want to see this or can you pull this kind of thing in? Yes, they really loved um, the natural woods. Mm. So they did ask, like, can you bring in like a darker stained natural wood? And they wanted to go mid-century vibe. That was their favorite furniture design Mm -hmm. that we narrowed down. So we went with the mid-century, the darker stain wood and then we repeated that, made sure all the woods matched yeah. in the furniture. And then we oh, brought it a that. step. F- yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, the worst thing is to like watch a set. And I'm like, the three different types no, of wood. No cohesiveness <laughs> to it. I'm like, no, no, no. So um, and that's what makes good design, right? The cohesiveness. So you're pulling in, you know, you try to stick with like 
three to four colors Mm -hmm. and don't go crazy with colors, then you know you're staying cohesive. Um, And think about that in the wood tone. You always want to have the same wood tone um, as much as you can throughout the room. So I did bring in a wainscoting that we did to add texture and uh, transition to the wall. Mm -hmm. And that helped with adding a super quick element to the wall and one bulk MDF piece that I didn't have to spend a lot of time transitioning. Mm -hmm. So we just did um, MDF boards, um, wallpapered them ahead of time, put them in two pieces so it didn't take a lot of time, and then popped those up on the wall during one of the transitions. And then to cap that off, because we didn't have time to putty or to right. make a you know a seam in between, so then you got to get creative. You're like, okay, I'll just put a strip of molding in between the two sections to cover that up, um, and then we'll do a detail molding on top. And to pull in the wood that you don't Mm -hmm. see very often is we pulled in the matching wood onto the wall, too. Um, So we just got a piece of wood molding, stained it the same color as all the furniture, and then we're able to um, pull that all in with the walls as well. I love that. Give it some some of that depth Mm -hmm. (laughs) texture. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. And then you'll notice other pieces throughout the set um, where I found a company take one of the graphics Mm -hmm. that I liked with this triangle um, look on a white fabric and they made mm-hmm. the curtains the pillowcases oh. even a wall clock blanket so everything kind of pulled together with that one fabric um throughout the space i love that that sounds amazing ouch <laughs> yes. the film hub where imagination becomes a reality <laughs>